my lecture series this is lecture number 2 we will be seeing the following topics at the end of the lecture the participants will learn what is called armature and feed type of bindings used in alternator and motor reasons for selecting the type of binding in any electrical machine when we say armature armature is one their output is state for example alternator is data a terminal bus from where we take the output this data is called armature in case of a motor the output is taken from the rotor. So, the rotor shaft we say is the arch. Wherever the magnetic field is created, that is called a field. In case of alternator, the rotor is the field, stator is the arch. This is in case of AC machines. In the case of motor, stator is the field and the rotor is the arch. In case of DC machines, we have the stator as field for both generator and motor and the rotor becomes the arch. This is what I explained in this power, uh, powerpoint presentation, armature, field etc. DC machines with generator or motor, the rotor is the armature, the stator is the field where we create the magnetic. Alternators and motors are similar in construction. They have a one stator and one motor. Alternators can run as a motor as long as there is a power supply available. Similarly, a motor can be run as an alternator if you have a pine mover to drive the motor because the magnetic field has to be changed. If you see for the winding connection, first we will talk about the AC system. All alternators on board the ship, whether low voltage or high voltage, they are star connected. The star connection is given like this. The star connection is done in the stator from where the output is taken. You are seeing here line 1, line 2, line 3. They are connected to the MSB for giving power supply to the bus bus. And we are representing normally as RYB. So we got three windings. This is uh, called uh, each winding will represent one phase. This is called R phase. This is called a B phase. This is called a Y phase. In star connection, this point is called neutral, marked as N. Theoretically, we say algebraic sum of currents flowing through the neutral or towards the neutral is zero. And the VR, what is shown is called phase voltage, we can call V phase. That is a R phase, the voltage occurs. That is between the neutral and the line, the voltage is represented here by VR, we can say the V phase. Similarly, it is VY. The V phase and the VB is also a V phase. And then we got something called a line voltage. The VRY represented is called a line voltage. It is across the two lines, line 1, line 2, or you can call RYB, RY. So this VRY is equal to VL, the line voltage, is comprising of two quantities, two phase voltages, R phase and Y phase. You see here on the right side, there is a phase R diagram show, VR, VY and the VB. They are all distributed over each, I mean angle between these two phase R quantities is 120 degrees. Because that the stata is a circular structure and we are having three windings, each winding is having 120 degrees apart. 360 degrees is circular the same, distributed for the three phase windings. 
So this angle is 120 degrees. So the V of Y will be the resultant of this is V of Y resultant of V of and K1. Mathematically, after solving, you find that V of Y will be root 3 times V of. Or we say that star connection line voltage is equal to root 3 times V this. As far as the current is concerned, what are the current coming here? I phase in B line. So in star connection, I L becomes equal to I phase. The power is always given as in terms of line quantities root 3 V L into I L cos phi. Cos phi is a power factor. This will be explained in the next lecture how the power factor comes into picture. If I want to measure the power in terms of the phase quantities, because three phases are there, three windings are there, power developed will be 3 into P phase into I phase cos phi. This is as far as the star connection is concerned. Now we come to why the star connection is preferred for the alternators. Suppose that an example I take the line voltage, what is represented as the RBR y as 440 volts. Each uh, phase will have its own voltage, but this VL is comprising of two voltages, VR and VY. Remember, in AC, we don't have arithmetic addition, it's all vector additions. So, for producing 440 volt, each winding will produce only 1 by root 3 voltage. As we know that uh, V phase is VL by root 3. That means each phase will produce only 250 volts. Let us say that uh, each phase VR will be 254, VY will be 254. Combinedly, they produce a 440 volt a phase arch. The voltage equation is given as normally 4.44 into frequency into the plus into number of turns. The frequency flux 4.44 remaining constant, we can say V is proportional to number of turns. Suppose each winding has to generate 440 volt. I repeat, each winding has to generate 440 volt. Let us say I require x number of turns. But now, each winding is going to generate only 1 by root 3 of the voltage constant. So the number of turns required will be x by root 3. That means I am saving in the copper. Number of turns per phase will be reduced. To enable to generate 440 volts, I am going to use reduced number of turns. So when the copper is reduced, the copper losses are reduced, the efficiency is improved. That's the main reason in alternatives we use star connection. Important point is whenever the alternator is loaded, the torque is not produced by the alternator, the torque is given by the by mover. If you see in this drawing, practically the star connection is given like this. The three windings are there and this becomes a neutral point, a common point. So the star connection, what we had in the previous uh, slide,
this neutral point is this point, a person will be. So if I open the terminal box of the alternator practically, I will find a copper bar connecting the bottom three terminals. There are three winding six terminals, the bottom three terminals will be connected with within like a short end. So this is identified as the star connection practically. So the alternator main purpose is to generate the voltage. Whenever it is loaded, the load is uh, taken care of by the prime mover. So the load will be dependent upon the prime mover, the prime mover rating. And uh, this slide, what you see here is the delta connection. All the motors are delta connected. The idea is to produce Torque. Motor has to drive a load. Hence, it has to There are the torque. The torque is given roughly proportional to V squared. Terminal voltage squared. In delta one day, each base we have the full voltage. For example, here, if you see between R and Y, this winding, so this voltage is a phase voltage, same thing is coming as line voltage. So, in delta connection, V phase is equal to E. So, when I give the power supply to the motor for the delta connection, I apply full voltage. So, maximum torque is available. Maximum torque is available. But this uh, current is applied by the two windings, two phases. For example, this particular uh, line 1, the current is supplied by two phases, IR and IB. So here we say I phase is equal to IR by root 3. If I do the vector diagram and then start drawing these uh, uh, vectors, the resultant current you will find is IR by root 3. Calculation I am not doing it here, but it gives, again, power is. O3 VL IL cos y or 3 into V phase into I phase cos y. So delta connection, I have a full voltage across each phase. So number of turns compared to alternative will be more. Here losses are more. Copper loss of more that again depends upon the load because we know that the copper loss has been given as I squared uh, depending upon the load, the load current will vary, losses will vary. But number of turns also more. You see the practical aspect, delta connection is given this way. On the left side, you see the practical connection on the motor. If the delta connection is given this way, let us see, let us try to explain what it is actually. If I say this is because the motor, the winding has got to two weeks. If you see here, uh, one, let us say one dash, two, two dash, three, three dash, one, one dash, two, two dash, three, three. One dash is connected to two. One dash is connected to two. 2 dash is connected to 3, 
3 dash is connected to 1. So, it is something like uh, alternate connection for delta to mark it. So, this is the way the delta connection is represented practically. Even if you open the motor terminal box, the connection will be like this. So, remember the point again to repeat alternators do not produce any torque. Torque is produced by the prime mover. So, the load depends upon the heating of the prime mover. Normally, when you say the torque, literally speaking, the torque we say proportional to rotor flux into water current this flux is proportional to the applied voltage because it comes to the induced EMF to the water the water current depends upon the induced EMF on the water plus the load applied so the torque is roughly proportional to this square that's what they are coming to conclusion so with this I conclude this venture next lecture we will see that three powers in the uh, AC circuit and then we will see how the power factor is coming into the picture. Thank you very much.